Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So on the agenda tonight, we have Adrian Vandenberg and this is going to be coming from 1984 and it's going to be his performance with his band Vandenberg of Burning Heart. So let's get these guys up on screen and see how they get on. <laughs> I'm just going to jump in here because Adrian Vandenberg, probably well known for being in White Snake alongside Steve Vai, and this kind of music is right in my area, as you can probably tell from my hair, but it's the kind of stuff that I really like to listen to and also write in. I think one of the reasons that David Coverdale got Adrian involved in White Snake was because Adrian had that ability to write songs and write great melody. It's one of the things that I mentioned about top technical players is that you can have some great players but then writing a song writing something that's melodic is a totally different ball game and in those rare cases you will get someone who can not only play on the fretboard and melt your face but they can also write something melodic like here we had a really top technical intro with a little bit of shredding on that acoustic guitar but then we go into that really nice chord progression which just lays the foundation for this vocal then to come in obviously then further on when the dynamics change. Adrian's then getting into his electric guitar. Like with so many hard rock bands of the time, it goes straight into that hard rock overdriven guitar sound. And just while we've got him in shot here, quick shout out to Bert Heerdink, who is supplying such an amazing live vocal. And this is the thing about the 80s is there is big hair and yeah, some of the fashion choices were questionable, but there was such high quality music and high quality live music actually taking an album sound and reproducing it on the stage live. It's one of those things that is a dying art because nowadays 
bands just get a recording playing in the background and then you'll just get a live vocal and the musicianship often it's cheaper just to play a backing track but back in these days it was just plug in and play and it was just talent and raw ability and used to get a sound that was comparable to the actual album because more often than not these guys set up in the studio pressed record and they're now recording the album. So you get a really, really authentic sound when they then hit the stage live because it is so much a similar sound because they're just doing exactly the same as they did in the studio. And just getting back to Adrian, of course, we could see right at the beginning of the track that top technical ability on the fretboard, on acoustic here. So it has to be absolutely top notch. And then he got into that little bit of hybrid picking when we got into the more melodic chord progression that's gonna actually provide the basis of the song. But now the dynamics are starting to open up so let's get back to the track and see how Adrian gets on with his solo section as well. go so breaking down that solo by adrian there you can see that he has got that appreciation to really take his foot off the gas if the solo requires it and if that composition requires it as well because he wasn't just shredding his way through that whole solo very much tried to slow it down a little bit and play more melodically we can see the synchronization between left hand and right hand that adrian is an absolutely top technical player and we got a great example of that in the intro as well probably an even better example because of the fact that it was an acoustic but even in that solo really slowing it down but you can see he actually does transition to that more classical hand position with that thumb behind the neck and you'll tend to get that when you want to make a little bit more of a stretch from first finger to little finger because the thumb behind the neck will give you that ability just to stretch out a little bit if you are playing major scales or if you're playing a scale where you need to make a little bit more of a stretch and also he then popped that thumb over the top for the contemporary hand position to then play the root note on that low E string if he wants it and also just to keep that low E string quiet you can just pop that thumb over the top and just rest on that string to keep it quiet but of course Adrian's got all the techniques and he knows exactly how to get across the sound that he wants to with his lead playing and this track Burning Heart actually got to number 39 in the US charts and the album self-titled 
capital as Vandenberg was actually recorded not far from where I am now, just 10 minutes down the road in a town called Cookham. And this was at Jimmy Page's studios, which he called Soul Studios. And since then, it's changed hands. I think Chris Rea owned it. But I've been to this studio. I can't remember what I was recording there or why I was there. I just know I was there with my second guitarist. But it was called The Mill Studios. I think it is called The Mill Studios now, but I'd have to check because it has changed hands. But it's just interesting that even though they were number 39 in the USA, the actual album was recorded in England in Jimmy Page's studio. And in the 80s, Vandenberg released three albums, four albums if you include the best of Vandenberg. But then when David Coverdale got in touch with Adrian and he joined up with Whitesnake, this is pretty much straight after David had actually done a mass firing of the members who made that White Snake album. And then Vandenberg actually played the solo on Here I Go Again. And it's one of those things that it really does show because John Sykes, who did the whole album, all the lead and rhythm work on that White Snake album, apart from when that re-release of Here I Go Again happened, that was Adrian Vandenberg playing the solo, whereas I always thought for years that it it was John Sykes doing it. And it just goes to prove that Adrian's technique, the way that he could almost emulate or copy another guitarist so that when you hear it, you think it's this other player because John Sykes had a quite crazy wide vibrato sometimes. And that's certainly something that Adrian put into that solo. And another little bit of interesting history is that Adrian played in Whitesnake with Rudy Sarzo and Tommy Aldrich, who I actually did a video on last night with Ozzy Osbourne. But they also then started a band after Whitesnake called Manic Eden. And Manic Eden disbanded in 1994 because Adrian then got involved with the Greatest Hits tour with Whitesnake. And another little interesting thing more recently, in 2011, Adrian wrote a single for a football team, a Dutch football team called FC20. And the problem was that he released this under his name Vandenberg. And the members of the band from the 80s said, oh, you can't use that name because that was our band name back in the 80s. So they took him to court for using his own name to release a song that he had written. And of course, the court said that he's got the right to use his own name. And it's one of these things that with the music industry, everything goes to court. Even some guy who has written something and just used his own name to release it. And other people saying, you can't use your own name. Whereas it's just one of those crazy crazy music lawsuits that just happen all the time. But Adrian Vandenberg, great to see a little bit of his early work here in 1984. It's just a couple of years after this, 1986, that he then went over to Whitesnake. I think because the Vandenberg, this especially was their biggest hit, but then didn't quite reach the same level after that. So then made that move over to Whitesnake. But great technical ability here. Also an ear for melody and could write songs. But thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!